I just weighed anchor here from Gibraltar. 16 knots of wind. A bit of a fiasco starting out. I tried to raise the mainsail and uh, the, mast, the halyard was wrapped around the mast desk, which is pretty normal. But it, it got so wrapped that it actually wasn't able to get it, get it undone. So we'll just be able to, I'm just gonna use the jib for now because there's too many ships. It's just crazy. The amounts of ships out here tonight. So, what's going on out here? What is he doing? Man, it felt pretty chaotic getting out of there just with all those lights at night. But now that I'm out of there, it looks like it should calm down a bit traffic-wise. And Torvia has my goal. So like 300 miles. Uh, I got someone offer me a free slip there. That's the plan. Should take a few days. Currently creeping along at uh, zero knots. <laughs> between zero and uh, two or three knots. Yeah, now we're not moving at all. Oh, we've done a, we've done a 180 too. So yeah, this is great in the shipping lanes. We're doing this kind of nonsense. All right, the wind has returned and now we're doing uh, about five knots. I think we've got a probably a knot and a half of current at least. And the stars are pretty good. I'm not sure if you can really see them on the camera. Nah, but I can see the Milky Way. And um, lots of dolphins that every once in a while I hear them kind of popping up. And I've caught a few with a flashlight. They're kind of hard to see at night. So pretty happy now. Pretty good mood. The boat's got a nice smooth motion. And we're getting further away from the uh, shipping lane. You can see more, most of the ships are further south of us. Uh, so we'll just stay kind of north, north of those guys. And might be able to even get a little bit of rest range on the AIS is like really good today. I don't know why, but I can see, I can see ships like a hundred miles away. Look at that. So next morning, really good night. I covered 46 nautical miles in 10 hours. And I even got a little sleep because there wasn't that many boats around. The sun's come up. Now, right now there's three fishing boats somewhere around me. And usually when you see some fishing boats on AIS, there's also other ones that are not on AIS, but I don't actually see have visual sight of them. There's one to my left. I hear him. Day one, we've got salmon for lunch. I worked my way a little too close to the coast uh, this morning and the wind kind of started to die off, uh, but, I tacked, but I jived further offshore and now it's, it's really picking up. Uh, we're doing, yeah, back up to five or six knots. And I was thinking about doing the spinnaker. I'm glad I didn't put it up though because I think it'd be a little much. Um, I might pull out the whisker pole. I mean, the, pull out the Genoa soon. This had kind of like a rogue wave come over and splash the cockpit. I mean, the waves aren't that big out here. Maybe two or three feet. Well, it's pretty rolly though. Um, the wind's a little variable. Like some of it picks up and we're going pretty good. Other times, uh, not so much. But uh, we're moving along pretty good. Still at least four, four and a half knots. <clears throat> Ooh, it's really rolly. I think it's just that that wave frequency, you know, that like gets the boat resonating at the right time to really make it swing back and forth. It might be time for my afternoon nap. I guess I had lunch, so it's probably about that time. There's a lot of these uh, just container ships and tankers and stuff that are just kind of like floating around at like one, maybe moving at a knot or so. I'm not sure what's up with that. They're all over the place, but they're not. A lot most of them aren't actually moving. They're just drifting, I guess. Got a spinnaker flying in record time. I think it was nine minutes by the time I got all the tangles out and it flying good. And then 12 minutes until I had the, the lines all organized too. And sorted out a little issue with the preventer. 
Oh, we need to snag that up still. Yep, now preventer is snug. And this thing's flying great. Great weather for the spinnaker. Nice and warm. About uh, seven knots of wind. So I just uh, took a little nap on the front of the boat while the spinnaker was flying and autopilot was steering. It was so perfect. The, it's really warm weather now. Got the hatches cracked open. Um, if we weren't going so fast, I'd go for a swim now. It actually went and picked up a little bit, so now I'm hand steering, trying to keep the spinnaker uh, happy. I'll we'll probably take it down soon, but I'm enjoying the, enjoying the speed. It's like the first time I've really sailed the boat in uh, warm weather like this uh, since I did my big refit. I'm thinking about taking out the, uh, the glass and the, and the dodger just so I get some more airflow going through here. I wonder if that's going to be a bad idea. It's kind of a lot of uh, bolts to remove, but it would be nice to have a little bit of breeze. I'll, I'll think about that for a week or so and see if there's like any, if I end up beating up wind, if I would regret that probably. We got our visitors. Nice. A bunch of them. Look at all those guys. Just went for a great swim with the dolphins and um, they stuck around long enough for me to get in the water. So that was pretty cool. But then after I got in, they kind of swam away pretty quick. I think they don't like to follow the boat when they put the sails down as much. It's not as fun for them. Um, when I have a second person, I'll have to try to jump in with the boat sailing and then just trail a rope so I can climb back on. But we were going a little too fast for that. Uh, to swim with the sails up today, I think. It was still pretty cool though. Get to see them underwater. Water is super clear out here, of course. Dinner today is onions and crackets. Yum, yum, yum. The sun just set. We've done about 110 miles in the first 24 hours, which I'm pretty happy with that. Just on the edge of the shipping lane, but I'm gonna start heading closer towards land. It's gonna be like less, you know, shipping, probably more fishing boats. Looks like about 200 miles to go, so if the winds hold up, maybe 48 hours or so. Let's see. Ooh, I just woke up and the wind's gotten to about uh, 20 knots out there. And we've been surfing at 8 to 9 knots down these waves, so. It's getting kind of exciting out there. I rolled up a little bit of jib so, it wouldn't, uh, so I wouldn't have to do it later. Getting close to the end of day number two. We've done 220 miles and we're We've gotten close enough to the shore where I could get some cell signal. I had to use the internet for a few things, so that's been nice. And we've got about 80 miles to go. Really great conditions. We're just flying along. I'm gonna sit down before I fall in. <laughs> it looks like the wind might kind of die overnight or switch around. It's hard to believe when it's this good right now. Um, in which case, I might, I might just motor because I think the, the wave action is gonna be kind of bad. Or maybe pull in the one of these ports here on the way, just uh, to let things calm down a bit, but we'll see what, what happens. Probably in a few hours I'm gonna make dinner. Just been kind of taking it easy. I need to edit some more videos, but it's like, I, once I get started, I'm fine editing the video. I'm just getting started. I hate starting. Uh -oh. no. I made myself a, a little sandwich for lunch with salmon and avocado and cream cheese. I'm surfing some waves out here. I think it might be starting. The wind is maybe starting to die. It kind of goes away completely. And then it picks up. And they've got like these 
six foot waves. It's really going to make us rocking and rolling. Now it's completely going to be very uncomfortable. If it even drops below seven knots, I think it's going to be kind of uncomfortable because I don't think we're going to keep the sails full. And I'm Scott, I'm getting bored. I'm in that point of the passage where it's like, ah, oh, I'm so bored. Yeah, there's so much stuff I could do. Like I could just clean up the, the mess in the cabin. Everything kind of fell out. Don't want to do it. I could edit my video. I have like three videos behind. I don't want to do it. I could write more emails, but I don't want to do it. I could just lay in bed and watch YouTube videos and listen to podcasts. That sounds pretty good to me. Oh, the wind's really dying out pretty bad. And the seas are still about five feet. So the sails are having a good time. Of course, I put the spinnaker up just to give us a little extra push every now and then. In between, just laying limp there. Pressing the stuff. Still 60 miles to go. 60 nautical miles. Um, we can make it like 30 miles and the wind's still dead. Uh, I could anchor around the other side of the cape there. Otherwise, uh, maybe the wind starts up at 2. See where I am? Man, now it's so hot. At least the sun's about to go down and then the heat won't be as a problem. It's feeling so good. Last rest of the day and yesterday. Oh, now a spinnaker's about to get wrapped. Stop that. Uh, pull this one in. This is the anti-wrapped one. Stop that. All right, that was random. Just a 180 degree wind shift. And uh, yeah, the wind's kind of on our nose, but we're moving and we're going through the waves pretty comfortably. Don't know how long it'll hold up. I wonder if it's like a, as the sun went below the mountains, like a catabatic kind of. So maybe it'll just be a gust for a couple hours and die off. But yeah, maybe it'll hold up. Um, it's kind of nice because we're going upwind, but we still got the waves behind us for now. It might, it might steep it up and get a little bit more uncomfortable soon. To tighten up that main sail a little bit. Maybe bear off a little, actually. I wonder if it's a squall or a catabatic wind. Just feels good to be moving. I literally lost the wind for like two hours and became the most pissy person in the world. But now I'm happy. But then once I end up beating up wind for like a couple hours, then I'll be annoyed again. So chart update uh, maybe 50 60 miles to go getting closer it's just the most unusual feeling having these these kind of large waves um like kind of lifting us up and surfing us from behind while the wind is coming from the front and like every time the wave lifts us up i can feel the wind speed increasing really strong because we like surf down the wave and then our, our apparent wind increases and we kind of bear off a bit and then we fall back down and slow down and then the apparent wind dies down for a second. It's like, it's like you can hear the whole boat breathing with every little you know, surf we, we, we go down. I must have had this happen before in the past, but not quite to this, this degree. It's very, it's actually a pretty enjoyable boat motion. We're staying like, you know, heeled over pretty well and the wind vane's steering great. And, uh, yeah, it's probably the most comfortable upwind uh, beating upwind I've, I've, uh, I've done. We've got about 13 to 16 knots of wind right now. It'll be interesting to see what kind of Mediterranean uh, wind and weather patterns there are and how they differ from other places. Winds have continued to increase. About 20, 22 knots. Barely hanging on 
here. Don't really want to fall in. Winds have increased to about 25 knots. I still got the full sail up. We're burying the rail right now. Well, sometimes. Okay, there it goes. Uh, I'm stubbornly flying the full sail though. I think it'll it'll pass. Um, Looks kind of like a squall or something. I still haven't even eased, eased out the mainsail, so I think we're doing okay. The sails aren't luffing or anything. We'll carry on this way. The wave train has switched direction though, so now it's actually kind of flattened out the bigger waves from behind. I mean, now we have smaller waves from the front, so it's still not too bad, but these small waves are going to get big if this doesn't die down soon. Oh, and Wendy, it looks like it might lighten up in just an hour or so. And it looks like there may be some thunderstorms over by Torre Vieja or closer to shore. Good morning, day number three. Didn't cover very many miles last night. Eventually the wind did come back and I was able to uh, put up the jib and we were just moseying along at a knot or two. Um, we have a wreck back to going downwind and we got a little bit of wind now. I just, I switched to the mainsail. I'm about to put up the spinnaker. Last, last night it fell in the water and it, um, when I, when I got, I got wrapped around the uh, shroud and fell in the water when I was taking it down. So it was all wet. So I'm going to try to launch it out of the bag this time. I did that once before and it worked okay. I think it might be just as much work because I still have to kind of like organize it so it opens up. But, uh. Feels like less work if they don't have to put it in the bag and then take it back out of the bag again. You know? So the only halyard I have led back in my, after my boat is the um, spinnaker halyard here, and that's because when I pull the spinnaker up, I just I need to be able to get the, the sheets kind of as it's going up or right after it's going up and just running back and forth. I'm not sure if that would work. Maybe it would. I haven't, I haven't really tried it on the on the front there. Well, that works super good. No need for the bag. And actually, I think I got it trimmed pretty decent for the wind direction. So, just kind of keep going this way and we'll work our way a little bit to the left as we get further close to that point. Just wanted to stay away from these uh, fishing boats all over here. That's great. That got us from three knots to about five knots and we've only got about 30 miles to go. So, maybe six hours we'll, we'll be there. This holds up. We are now in an unofficial race by this, with this uh, 40 foot Tawaii sailboat. Will the blue spinnaker or the red spinnaker win? That is the question. I think what we're gaining on him. We're getting closer to him over the last few miles. We are getting close to passing them. On focus. We're almost side by side. So it looks like we beat him. We are ahead. Pickle is a fast boat, and we're gonna be even faster when we get our new sails. Uh, I just had the order in, so they should be here in, it was three, three weeks maybe? Oh boy. All right, the heat's getting to me. I'm gonna pop the glass out of the front of the Dodger and then we'll see if I decide to take the, top, the sides out too. The Dodger. Oh. Came out pretty good actually. Ah, oh. my guy's breeze going through here. 
Well, not too much because the wind's from behind, but it's definitely better. I just realized though, I use a Dodge a lot of times to hide the microphone from the wind, so I'll have to start using my uh, my the wireless uh, DJI mic more. Probably if I take these glass out. Well, we got a lot clearer picture going forwards. So I have a question for the YouTube hive mind. Um, when you have like a block and tackle kind of arrangement, it seems to happen a lot for me on the Traveler mainly. Somehow it like, as I use it over time, <laughs> it's hard to get this in the film. Uh, somehow when I, just like over time, this, the, the ropes, they get, they get twisted to the point where like when you bring it to its full, like uh, try to tighten it up, it will kind of like, see if I can get it to do it, it'll like buckle back on itself. Wow, it's not doing it that time. But you know what, if you know, if you've had this happen to you, you know what happens, like it just kind of will turn into twists and knots and things. But you can see how this rope is twisted, They're, the ticks aren't straight. Um, I've started working them out on this side. I'll, I'll just gradually, like, oh, work them out until I get them out, and then it works great for a while. And then maybe a few months later, it got, it's got a little twist again. And I used to think it was maybe I was coiling the rope or something weird, but I, I'm very careful not to like put any twists or coils in the rope. I just kind of like, well, try to lay it out in a pile or, or maybe flake it. Um, but either way, it doesn't really seem to make much difference. It always gets those twists in there. All right, we are pulling into the marina here. Hans offered me this free slip here. He doesn't, he sold his boat. And also the slip is available. So if you need to buy a slip around Spain and uh, Marina Salinas, that's where we are. There you have it, he even made this little step. What a cool spot. Available for sale. Apparently Torre Vieja is like a vacation spot for Swedes. Even a system black at bar. And they got these uh, boats that look like cars. Torre Vieja means old tower. Uh -huh. This is the old tower that used to guard the coast because it's the highest point in the town upon this cliff. Okay. Pirate. Look at that tower. Raiders. See the raiders coming in from Africa. Oh, the first Swede. Swede number one. <laughs> Today, it's electrical projects. I've been troubleshooting the mast. Uh, now it's the anchor light and the mast camera. I think I can see where the problem is. I'm guessing one of these is our anchor light and one of these is our uh, camera, mast camera. So uh, these heat shrink butt connectors appear to not be such a watertight seal after all. So my solution, I just I just cut the wires and I figured out this was the one that was the camera. And now I've I've even labeled it somewhere. Camera. And so I just I just fixed it. And my solution was to use the exact same connectors that failed before a second time. And we'll just hope they work this time, you know? Maybe maybe they will. We have success. I'm so happy to have this camera again. This is gonna be so nice. And I also got the anchor light working, so. Let's do projects today. So my next project today is going to be to find a way to hook the electric tiller pilot up to the, the wind vane. They make, they make a way to do it by, by putting a pin. So I have a spare tiller pilot pin. You put it on the wind vane thing right there. Um, and then that will let me connect that up. So I'm just gonna use a little, mix up a little JB weld on here. So I've got that nice and glued in there. So then I just need to figure a way to connect this guy somehow right here. And then when the tiller pilot moves this wind paddle, of course that will move the servo uh, pendulum rudder back and forth when the boat's moving. And then that will in turn move my tiller to the lines. Well, I used to have the Simrad TP30, 32, I think maybe. It's the higher end model of this. And that really had no problem steering the boat. This one didn't used to have any problem steering the boat, but now I think it's, I hear the gear, the, I don't know, it's like a belt slipping or a grinding noise uh, when the, 
in stronger conditions. So I feel like to ensure the longevity of this, I should try to attach it to the wind vane so that it doesn't have to work so hard. I think I found a pretty simple solution, just a bungee holding that. Seems super secure. And then that attaches to the pin there. And that's my new autopilot to set up. I just need to test that out. <clears throat> wow, I've been meaning to do that for like three years. That was pretty easy. It's more umbrellas than beaches here. First swim in the Mediterranean. It felt so nice down there. A little cave over there I swam into. Uh, I need to start swimming out here every day. It's awesome. And a few little fish, bunch of fish over there. Bunch of little fish. I have to give a special thanks to Hans for letting me use his slip. Hans has sold his boat, so the slip is available if anybody is interested in purchasing it. Um, it's here in Torre Vieja, a very lovely place. I will leave um, in the comments, like a pinned comment with his contact information if it's still available. As you can see, there is plenty of room for pickled herring, and you, this is obviously a slip for much bigger boats. There's a 44 foot to our left. I think it fit a 50 foot boat in this slip. Depends on what the marina says, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> plenty of room here for a bigger boat. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'll be taking a little break from sailing on pickled herring to go to uh, see the finale of the ocean race uh, in Genova, Italy. So that'll be a different, a little bit of change of pace. But right after that, I'll be back uh, pickled herring sailing to Ibiza and uh, Mallorca and then on to Barcelona and work my way down to where I'm now I'm in Corsica working down to Sardinia next so if anybody's got recommendations around there let me know uh, also big thanks to everybody who's helped kind of support the, the channel lately I really appreciate the donations after my anti AG1 uh, athletic greens <laughs> that was kind of funny um, uh, if anybody else wants to Find me a beer if they're getting some other videos or support the channel. Like there's links in the description for how you can do that. Um, otherwise, just thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.